Good evening to you. Welcome back to church. It's so good to see you tonight. It's Wednesday. I'm looking out to see how many people wore green today. A lot of y'all. I got to halfway through the day and I was like, I didn't wear any green. I'm going to be in trouble. I don't sure if you're supposed to say that in church or not. Anyway, I'm glad you're here today. It's an honor to have you this, this evening. We got folks coming in still, so we're going to take just a minute. Why don't you do this? Take your songbook. Let's stand together. Turn to page 252. 252, Higher Ground. Now, this is our church theme song. You may not have known that, but right in there on that first verse, you've got that new heights, all right? Doesn't give you much time to get ready for it, but when you get there, you got to sing that part just a little bit louder than the rest of the song. Maybe even yell it if you want to, all right, um, if, you, if you feel like it. But we're going to go ahead and get started. This I, I'm just thrilled you're here today. What, we had a good day. We had a great teen time, and uh, we had a bunch of teens show up. A whole bunch more guys than girls, so the guys totally took it. But, but girls, we want you there. So um, if you weren't able to make it tonight, plan to come next week, 6 o'clock. We had a great time. I'll tell you a little bit more about it in a minute. Brother Caleb, would you come? Hymn 252, Higher Ground. rather live on higher ground than lower ground rather live up on the up on the heights with the lord than in the valley with the devil i just made that up i'm not sure if that's exactly how it works or not but uh i would really i would i mean wouldn't you all right so there we go i'm glad you're here tonight let's pray and uh we've got kids waiting in the back where we got people ready to go everywhere so let's pray we'll get started father thank you for a good uh, opportunity to be in church and thank you for uh a lot of folks being here tonight. Thanks for good weather to be able to come. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the light. It's great to be able to come to church and it not be dark yet. And uh, thank you for your word that you've given to us and that uh, so many have died for just so we can have. Thank you for salvation. Thank you that Jesus came to this earth and died on the cross, paid the price for our sins so that we can spend eternity in heaven with you. Lord, there's so much to be thankful for, and I'm excited that we get to be in church together tonight, and I pray that you would teach us your word, help us to grow closer to you in all the discipleship classes, in the children's class, and, and in the auditorium uh, lesson tonight, and the prayer time. Lord, I just pray that you would work in a powerful way, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so if you are part of discipleship class, you can be dismissed. If you are in, a, uh, if you're in the children's class, you can be dismissed. And uh, everybody else, take your songbook, turn to page 113. We'll sing Blessed Assurance. Brother Caleb, come lead us in just a moment. I'm going to ask you to do this. If you're sitting on this side, I'm going to ask you to migrate over to this side. And it just, it'll just make it easier for teaching because uh, I'll give you, here's what I'll we'll do. I'll give you a chance, anybody that wants to, just to come stand up here and just see how when it's kind of empty, it's just really easier to teach whenever it's not kind of empty. So that's the reason for doing that. All right, so hymn number 113, everybody's moving. We've got people leaving. That's a backdoor revival right there if I've ever seen one. But they're going to discipleship classes, children's classes. It's just great to see so many people here tonight. Brother Caleb, come on, lead us to that next song, 113. Amen. Mm-hmm. 
right, you may be seated, and I hope, I hope we're at a place where everybody can see okay. Let me tell you that uh, as a teacher, a preacher, anybody standing up in front of a group, this just makes it so much easier. Thank you so much for being flexible. Oh, speaking of flexible, you should have seen the game we played for the... For our teen time, it was called Army Men. All right, so we had uh, plastic statues of Army Men, and it was up on the screen, and the, the kids had to stand like the, the statue was. You know, you know what plastic Army Men look like, right? Those little ones. So they're on all kinds of poses, and they put, they did a great job. They had to pose like them, and then we threw a twist at them at the end, and we gave them some poses that were pretty crazy that no Army Man really stands like. But um, we did pretty good. We're pretty flexible. We had Brother Vaughn go against who did Brother Vaughn go against? Ben and. Um, I think he's going to have to have therapy, actually, afterwards, after uh, whatever, whatever happened there. Um, but uh, we sure appreciate Brother Vaughn and Ms. Shanna. <clears throat> Thank you for all you do, help with the teens. Brother Timothy was there tonight, and uh, appreciate all, all the help. All right, uh, so uh, we're going to turn to Psalm 22 tonight. And we're going to call this Psalm 22, part 4. And um, I was about ready to go to Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is an awesome chapter in the Bible. I love Psalm 23. Um, but there's a little bit more of Psalm 22 that it was already outlined. I'd already put it together, and we just hadn't had a chance to get there yet. So I want to cover that this evening. I feel like there's something really important I was supposed to tell you, but I forgot what that was. So hopefully by, by the end of the, the service, I'll remember that. Psalm 22, all right, uh, quick review. Who can raise their hand and tell me what the first 22 verses of Psalm, or first 21 verses of Psalm 21, the major theme of those first 21 verses, even if you're guessing at it. I didn't give you a major theme, but we've kind of been teaching and preaching about it for the last few weeks. But Timothy? The crucifixion of Jesus, yes. So as you, as you look through, I'm almost there. I'm taking me, taking me a long time. As you look at Psalm chapter 22, just some of the highlights here. Uh, verse 1, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus said that when he was on the cross, if you remember. Um, let's see, verse number, verse, verse number 6. I, I preached this a few weeks ago. Actually, I had an opportunity to preach at a, a Christian school chapel here in town, up at Gospel Light Christian Academy today. And I was so thankful to be able to do that. And I preached this verse, but I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. You remember how Jesus was despised and rejected of men? All right, so, uh, and then you may remember, how many of you remember that word worm? What are a couple other ways that that word is translated? Does anybody remember? Anybody remember? Okay. So I'm finding out how good of a teacher I am right now, just to see if anybody actually... Or no, I'm, I'm teasing. Um, I don't remember from week to week what I preach, so don't feel bad about that. But Caleb, I saw you. You either scratched your nose or you raised your hand. I'm not sure. Uh, crimson. crimson, yes. yes. So, so that word worm, the word tola, I think is what it was. I'm not looking at the notes right now, so I'm trying to remember, go by memory. Um, 34 times it's translated as the word scarlet. Eight times as the word worm, one time as the word crimson. So uh, you've got a cross-reference there. And uh, Isaiah, if somebody wants to look this up for us and read it really loud, if, you, if you're comfortable reading in front of people and you want to look up something for us, it's Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Anybody want to do that for me? That uh, would like to do that, Miss Hillary? Okay. Uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verse number 18. Now remember, this word worm in, uh, in uh, Psalm 22, 6, but I am a worm and no man is talking about Jesus. Written a thousand years before Jesus came, a thousand years before he died on the cross. Um, but it's talking about what Jesus said. His, his description. This is, now you've got to remember this. This is still written by Jesus, okay? God, Jesus, Jesus, man, we're going way back here. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. They are the same person. This is written by God, the Holy Spirit of God, okay? So written about himself a thousand years before it happened. He said, I am a worm. And remember, it's translated the word worm, the word scarlet, and the word crimson. All together there, okay? Let me still go ahead and read Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now and let us read them together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. What an amazing thing. Jesus said, I am becoming sin for you. I'm going to become your sacrifice, and I am going to become the sin for you. Remember the beetle? The, um, oh, I don't remember the name of it, but it's a beetle that lives on a tree there in Israel in that area. And it crawls up in the tree, dies, it lays, lays its eggs, dies. Got to get in the right order. Lays its eggs, it dies. 
And then whenever the, the eggs hatch, the, the, the mother beetle it, it loses all its legs and a red substance flows out. It's just a great picture that it attaches itself to the tree, gives new life through the shedding of its uh, scarlet or its crimson. Just a great picture of the crucifixion of Christ. All right? um, so, verse number, number 7. Uh, all they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him. So just a quick review. These verses are about the crucifixion. Before crucifixion was even invented. Verse number 14. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. Describing the horrific scene of the crucifixion. My tongue, verse number 15. My tongue cleaveth. To my jaws, right there in the middle of that verse. Verse 16. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. What a description of the cross. Who would have ever thought, if you hadn't seen crucifixion, you wouldn't know what they're talking about. But here is God, a thousand years before Jesus dies on the cross, saying, they are going to pierce my hands and my feet. A description of dying on the cross. Verse 17, I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. Verse 18, they part my garments among them, they cast and cast lots upon my vesture. Now those other verses are about specifically about the crucifixion, but this verse is amazing. Now here's why it's amazing. There's two parts to this verse. First is, they part my garments among them. Second, they cast lots upon my vesture. Two different things are happening. When Jesus died on the cross, the soldiers that were there, they, they took his garments and they, part of his garments, they split them up. They cut them and they divided them up among themselves. I mean, this guy on the cross, I, I say guy, not to be disrespectful about Jesus, but as they probably were thinking about this person, this, this thief, this criminal, this, this person who says that he is God. He did miracles. He brought people back from the dead. He healed people. They, they say that he walked on water. I want a part of his clothes. You know, maybe it'll be like a lucky rabbit's foot, right? And, and uh, it'll be good luck for me or a good luck charm. or It'll be something like that, superstitious. So they took part of his clothes and they, and they cut them up, maybe with a sword or knife or something like that. They distributed them. But they couldn't do that with all of his clothes. Because he had a cloak or a, a robe, and it was knit together or woven together. And the way that it was made, it was if you cut that, it would unravel like a, like a scarf that, that's, that's uh, knitted maybe. And um, if you, you, you start pulling on it, and it's just going to come apart. If they would have cut his, his robe, it would have just fallen apart. So they didn't cut it in pieces and share it. They decided to gamble for it. And they, the Bible says here, a thousand years before it happened, and cast lots as gambling upon my vesture. The detail written a thousand years before Jesus even died on the cross is just incredible. So that's the first half of Psalm chapter 22. Now, the second half of, oh, sorry, the second half, please forgive me. My, my braces have been just doing weird stuff to me this last couple of weeks. And how many of you had braces? All right. The, the, the orthodontist was like three, four weeks. You won't even feel them, right? They're, you, it's been three years almost now. And just the last couple of weeks, they've started pinching me. So every, every once in a while, it just gra grabs me, all right? So please forgive me. We'll just move right on and pretend that it happened. All right, Psalm 22. We're going to pick up here in verse number 22. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. I want you to skip down to verse number 25. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. We're going to jump around just a little bit here, but what I want to do is I want to take these verses, I want to finish out this chapter, and just take these kind of verse by verse. And what, what are we talking about here? Verses 22 and 25. I'm going to give you just kind of like a mini title for each of these verses, and we're going to call this Public Praise and Public Offerings. Public praise and public offerings. He said, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. This, you got to understand, this is talking about David, and it's talking about our Savior. It, it applied perfectly in David's case, but it also applied perfectly in our Savior's case. He said, I'll declare thy name among my brethren. 
I will praise you in the midst of the congregation. Verse 25, my praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I'll pay my vows before them that fear him. Let me challenge you in, in an area of public praise and public offerings. Now listen to the whole thing here so you don't take it out of context and, and it doesn't make sense. Because when I say public offerings, you're thinking, oh man, what are we going to do now? Um, and uh, now, we, now pastor wants us to, like, to, to take credit and you know, make a big deal about when we're giving offerings. No, that's not what we're talking about. Well, just listen here. First he says, I'm going to declare thy name, God's name, unto our people. Maybe he's talking specifically about the name of Christ. But every person who believes in God should do what they can do to declare the name of Jesus to their own people. I believe in missions, but I also believe in declaring the name of Jesus Christ to our own people. Would you look at Romans chapter 10? Romans chapter 10 and verse number 1. I've been reading through Romans. I've been studying through Romans. These verses just came to mind, probably because I've just been there. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. The Apostle Paul says this. He says, brethren... Now, now did, did you catch there Psalm 22, verse 22? I will declare thy name unto my, my brethren. The Apostle Paul in Romans 10 1 says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that, those next four words, say them with me, is that they might be saved. And he's saying this, I have such a desire that my brethren, my, and uh, in another place, he says this, that my brethren according to the flesh, not necessarily spiritual brothers and sisters in Christ, but my fellow Israelites, the people that I grew up with, the, my nation, my, my country, my people, I have such a desire that my people would be saved. I want to challenge you in the area of declaring God's name to our people. Now, you don't stop there. We, the, the Great Commission says take the gospel to the whole world, every creature around the world. But let's start with our people. Not that our people are any better than our people, but our people are here. Our people are people we know. Our people are relatives, our neighbors, the people that we can talk to. We already have relationships with them. You don't have to raise money to send a missionary to talk to our people. They are, they are accessible. And I want to challenge you to declare thy name, God's name, unto my or, or your brethren. Look at chapter 9, verse 3 there of Romans. So chapter 10, 1, brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Chapter 9, verse 3, this is before it, but look at the detail he gives. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. I can't imagine that. But the Apostle Paul says, I could wish myself accursed. I could wish myself lost so that the rest of my people, my brethren, my family, my, my extended family, my nation might be saved. That's an amazing kind of love for your nation. I don't know that I have that kind of love for my nation. I wish I did. But let me challenge you. Let's do what we can to reach our nation with the gospel. Let's do what we can to reach Americans, to reach, I mean, reach anybody. We want to reach the whole world. But don't forget our people. The people across the street, the people across town, as soon as we can, I haven't had time, but as soon as we can, we're going to get a postcard and we're going to start mailing it to every home in our city. I want to reach our city with the gospel. I want to get it out there so every person can at least see the plan of salvation and make a decision on that. Declaring God's name to our people. But then uh, the verse number 25, look at that. Psalms now. Psalm chapter 22, verse 25. David says this. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I'll pay my vows before them that fear him. Just a couple thoughts here, and there's a whole lot more we can teach on it, but just a couple thoughts we go quick. Praising God in the great congregation. I've heard some people say that the great congregation is the multitudes of lost people. I'm sure some people believe the great congregation was the crowd of faithful believers at the temple. I'm not going to argue which one it is, but either way, the praise of God should be public. I mean, you ought to praise God privately. This morning, early in the morning, before it was light, I, I got a chance to go out and I got to pray and I got to spend time with God. What an awesome thing it is to praise God when nobody's there, just, just you and Him. But let me tell you, it's also an important thing for Christians to praise God publicly, not just privately, but publicly as well. It's okay whenever a blessing comes to say, praise the Lord in public. It's okay whenever you're at a restaurant to bow your head and pray and thank God for the... In a restaurant, okay? It's probably been a while since you've been in a restaurant. I just realized what I've said. They're starting to open up now again, right? 
when you're in public, it's okay. In fact, let me challenge you, not for me, but for your relationship with God, to praise God publicly. Not for show, but you know the song, hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine, right? To, to get our light, our candle to shine. Praising God in the great congregation is public praise. Praising God when other people can see it. It's an opportunity to be a witness. And that shouldn't be our only witness, but it's an opportunity to be a witness. And then there's the paying vows before God's people. He says, my praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them to fear him. Now, I know there's lots of vows that could be talking about here, but let's just talk about giving here. Or this, this, this paying our vows, our, our giving to God, not for show, but not necessarily secret either. You don't have to keep everything secret that you give, but we don't do it for show. What are we trying to do? I'm just saying I am just going to live for Christ. I'm going to be the same publicly as I am privately. He says, I'm going to pay my vows. I'm going to go to the great congregation. I'm going to go to the temple, and um, I'm going to give what I vowed to God. I don't care who sees it. I don't care if people look at me and say, wow, what a great Christian. I don't care if people look at me and say, what a loser. I'm just going to do what I told God I was going to do. So kind of like criticism. I don't know if you've heard about this. Some people said that criticism ought to be like, like water off a duck's back, right? It just kind of lands on you and just, just goes. But praise is the same thing. Praise ought to be the same way. Whenever somebody compliments you, don't two things, compliments and criticism. Just, just let them both go, right? Because if I take compliments and I'll you know, start getting a big head, you know what I'm talking about. And then your wife comes along and reminds you of reality, right? I heard a preacher that was, I heard of a preacher, uh, he was preaching for, he was pre- like a guest preacher at a different church, and the, the, the host pastor got up and said, now listen folks, I want you to hear a great preacher tonight. And the preacher got up and he preached. On the way home, he's sitting there in the car driving home, smiling on his face. And he says, sweetheart, to his wife, how many great preachers do you think there are in this world? And she looked at him and she said, probably one less than you think. All right? So take compliments and criticism the same way. Just let them come, let them go, right? So we're not giving, and we're not praising God so that other people will notice, but don't stop because other people might notice. All right, so you should display, let me say it this way. Oh, I forgot about that. I was going to tell you a story. Whenever I was a teenager, we used to show, now when you watch a movie in church, it's not called a movie. It's called a film. Just so you understand that. There's the difference there. And I'm not sure what the difference is, but that's what they always called it, right? Um, so we watched this film, this, this movie in church when I was a kid. And I don't remember how old I was, but I remember sitting there. I can still picture this on the screen there in the church. And it was, it was this movie about super Christians. And they, do you remember that one? Okay. I was trying to look it up on YouTube. I couldn't find it. Uh, so super Christians. And here's what they would do. When the offering plate would come by, it was, it was a great concept to help you get this idea. The offering plate came by, and before the man grabbed the offering plate to put his check in, he grabbed his shirt, and, and he ripped his shirt off, and there was a Superman emblem. And he made sure that before he put the offering in, everybody saw Super Christian putting his offering into the... Now, that's not what we're talking about. That's not what we're talking about. But he did say, I will pay my vows before them to fear him. I'm just going to do right. I'm not, not for show, but just to do right. Listen, you don't lose your reward in heaven if people know about your gift. You lose your reward in heaven if you give so that people will know about your gift. Here's what I want to challenge you. I just want to challenge you to be genuine. You be a Christian, whether you're in public or you're in private. You give whether you're in public or you're private. You pay your vows, whether it's publicly or private. Christianity should not be public for show, but it should be public. I hope that, let, let me, I'm going to say that again because I want this, this little phrase to sink in. Christianity should not be public for show, but it should be public. You ought not to be an undercover Christian. We've got too many undercover Christians. Do our neighbors know that we're Christians? Do our friends know we're Christians? And I'm, I feel the conviction of these questions just as I'm asking you these questions. Do they know we're Christians or are we undercover Christians? You should display publicly the things that God has worked into your life privately. Let me show you a verse for that. Go to Philippians chapter 2. Displaying publicly the things that God has worked into your life privately. And again, it's not for show. It's just being real. 
I love the way he says this. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. I don't care who's watching. I'm going to praise God. Whether I'm at school, whether I'm at work, whether I'm in my, in my neighborhood, whether I'm at church, we ought not be two different people for two different places. We shouldn't have a, a church, you know, super suit and then a, and then a, a, a public super suit. It just should be us all the time. And um, don't have to even put the super suit on. Philippians 2.12. Wherefore, my beloved. Uh, did I tell you that? Philippians 2.12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, this doesn't mean work on your own salvation until you get saved. It's not like, ah, just go work it out. Go figure it out. This is... God has put something in you, and you need to get that thing out. I'll show you. Look at the next verse. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do, of his good pleasure. So what God puts in you, by the grace of God, the Spirit of God is going to work some things into your life. When you get saved, you're a new creature. He starts working some things into you. My challenge to you is this. Just like the Bible says, work those things out. Don't, don't just contain it all. Um, go ahead and praise God. Go ahead and tell people about Jesus. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and do of his good pleasure. So it says with fear and trembling. I believe that's talking about humbly. Not in a proud way. Not like a, hey, God did this for me and I'm better than you, so I'm going to show you what a great Christian I am. No, with fear and trembling, I'm going to humbly just be the Christian God is working in my life. And then it says, with what you will and do, both to will and to do, if it's a good pleasure, those thoughts and actions. Every Christian should publicly demonstrate their salvation with a humble spirit. Don't just be saved. I didn't write this down, so I'm not sure if it's going to come out right. Don't just be saved. Be saved. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. It's not just about I'm a Christian. It's I'm a Christian. I'm going to live like a Christian. Not for show, but just because that's who I am. Not like the Pharisee in the temple. We used to have a book. I think it was a little golden book. We probably still have it at the house. It was called, oh man, I forgot. I, I thought I knew the name. Um, just turn here. All right, turn here. Luke chapter 18, verse 9. Luke chapter 18, verse 9. I'm going to think of the name of that. Do you remember that, the name of that book? Two men went to the temple to pray. Two men in the temple. Was that what it was called? Two men in the temple. By the way, this is totally rabbit trail here. Those books that I read when I was a kid, Bible story, true Bible story books, um, those, those, those books that challenged my character, those books that taught the truth of the scriptures, they stuck with me. Even today, parents, that is a great way to help your kids. Get them some good resource. I can help you with that if, if you're interested. All right. Luke 18, verse 9. This is how we're not supposed to work out our salvation. All right. And he spake this parable, so Jesus talking, unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Here he goes. Jesus is telling this parable. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Here's what he's saying. And I, I just picture him saying this nice and loud so everybody can hear. No, the Bible doesn't say that, but I, I think this is the picture here. Here's what the Pharisee says to God. God, I thank thee that I am not, a, I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Can you imagine praying like that? You go to the altar and... Let me just use Timothy for example here. And Caleb, right? Timothy and Caleb come to the altar. and Which one's going to be the bad guy? To, but Caleb, right? His, his wife helped us with that. All right, so, thanks, Connie. So, and, and picture this. They're, they're both at the altar, and Caleb's just praying really loud. God, thank you. I'm not a wicked, horrible sinner like Timothy right next to me over there. Can you imagine? But that's exactly what he's doing. And uh, he says, I'm, thank God I'm not a, as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week, and I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus asked this question, 
Oh, he tells them this, this answer, actually. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Da King David is saying this, look, I'm going to tell people about Jesus, and I'm going to give, and I'm going to praise God, not about me, but I'm just going to humbly be a Christian. I didn't write this down because it just came to me. And I, maybe somebody can help me with where this is. These things have I required of thee to walk humbly. I think it's in Amos. To, 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 I forget what it is, but part of it is to walk humbly with thy God. Just, and we'll have to look that up later. All right, look at chapter 20, back in Psalms, chapter 22, verse number 26. Psalm 22 these things doth the Lord require of thee. He tells a couple things, and then to walk humbly with thy God. Psalm 22, verse 26. I call this rewards for the meek. Rewards for the meek. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. Rewards for the meek. God has a special place in his heart for meek people. What does it mean to be meek? That's kind of a weird word. We don't use that very often. I mean, if you go to the the Hallmark store to the card section in Walmart, you're probably not going to find a card that says, you are so meek, and I just want to tell you how much I appreciate that. You're probably not going to see that. Usually when we think of meek, we think of weak. But it's not. Here's what meek is. Appropriately humble, submissive to God's will, not proud or self-sufficient. And God says, I'm going to reward the meek. He says he's going to reward them with, with what they need. Um, um, they shall eat and be satisfied. God rewards meek people with satisfaction. Eat and be satisfied. He rewards them uh, with, with being able to, to find God. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. This is just an awesome thing. To be able to seek God and find God and to be able to praise God. This, this relationship with God that you can have whenever, whenever you're meek. Remember, appropriately humble, submissive to God's will, not proud or self-sufficient. There was a guy in the Old Testament that had a temper. His name was Moses. But the Bible said he was more meek than any man who ever lived. All right? And so, so we understand meekness isn't weakness. It's this appropriately humble, submissive to God's will. That's a big part of it. Not proud or self-sufficient. And when it comes to salvation, the meekness to be able to say, God, I can't get to heaven on my own, so I'm going to trust Jesus Christ. Submissive to God's will, God's plan. And then one of the rewards for meekness is very simply, your heart shall live forever. We'll call it eternal life. God rewards meek people. And I can't explain all of it because in, uh, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, Jesus said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. This eternal life, your heart shall live forever. Isaiah 61, 1, this is the... The verse that Jesus quoted whenever he came into the synagogue and introduced himself as he started his ministry. But Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 is talking about Jesus and what he was going to say, what he's going to do when he comes. And Isaiah 61 1 says this, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach, listen to this, to preach good tidings unto the meek. And he goes on to tell some of the other things that Jesus was going to do. There's this, and I can't really describe it, but I can say it this way. There's a special place in the heart of God for those who are meek. Not, not weak. Appropriately humble. Submissive to God's will. Not proud or self-sufficient. I guess you could say it this way. Yielded to God. Yielded to God. A meekness. Meekness. Verses 27 to 29. Um, let's just read those together. Psalm 22, 27 to 29. And i got a long, long intro to it, but I want you to, not really long. Don't, don't worry, okay? Don't, don't throw any. I saw some oranges on the Welcome Center there. How many of you grabbed an orange on the Welcome Center on the way in? Don't throw one of those at me, please. All right. So, uh, we're, did you find Psalm 22, verse 27 to 29? All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among all nations. All they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship. Now, they use the word fat different than we use fat. This is going to mean like all the things that they desire, all right? This is not like a slam against, you know, fat people. So don't, don't, don't think that God's talking about that. Often in the Psalms, it's like a, it's like a, 
Everything that you ever need, all your heart's desires, anything that you want, you have. So usually that's the way it's described. All they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him. And none shall keep alive his own soul. Some interesting verses here. Now you've got to remember, the suffering of the Savior was the theme from verses 1 through 22. We're still talking about the Savior. We're still in the same chapter here. So the suffering Savior of verses 1 through 22 will become, listen to this, the King of Kings. And you see it starting to happen in verses 27, 28, and 29. The suffering Savior becomes the King of Kings. What an amazing thing. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you've got the story. Jesus coming, born in the manger, lives a perfect life, dies on the cross, the suffering Savior. But then you get to Revelation, and you see the King of kings and Lord of lords, the same person, God, in the flesh, coming back, not the suffering Savior anymore, but now the King of kings. And verse 27 says that he, uh, kindreds of all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee, for the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among all or among the nations. He was already king of kings, actually, even when he was a suffering, when he was suffering on the cross. We just didn't recognize him that way. Jesus said this as he was teaching the disciples to pray. Remember the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. Part of that we call the Lord's Prayer now. And Jesus said this, pray, pray like this. Matthew 6, 13, the end of it says this, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now we get kind of confused sometimes. Because we think the president's the most powerful man in the world. And we think we get worried about China or we get worried about North Korea or Russia or these different kingdoms. We look at history, we can see kingdoms, the Roman kingdom, the Greek kingdom, the, uh, the, the uh, Persian kingdom, Babylonian kingdom. And you see these, they rise and they fall. But Jesus is the king. The king of kings, the lord of lords. And, and we see it in verses 27 and 28. The kingdom is the lord's. In fact, the entire world, all the kingdoms of the earth are the Lord's. I love Philippians chapter 2. Would you turn there, verses 5 through 11? It's one continuous thought all through there, a couple of sentences, but one, actually, I think it's only two sentences through this, all these verses. We're talking about Jesus as, as he, the, the, the one, verses, verse 1, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And all this, they're, they're, they're piercing my hands, they're piercing my feet, but that's not the end because I'm coming back and I am the king of all the world. Philippians 2.5 says this, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Then you have the word who. The rest of these verses we're going to read are about Christ Jesus. All right? So who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Talking about Jesus. This describes him and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. This is what we've been reading about. Psalms 22, verses 1 through 21. This is about this God came to earth, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. We'll look at verse number 9. Verse number 9 through 11 uh, correlates with Psalm 27, uh, uh, chapter 22, verses 27 through 29. Look at this. Philippians 2, 5 through 9 talks about how Jesus came to this earth. He became a man, went to the cross, and died. But verse number 9 says this, Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. What a verse. What a series of verses. The same Jesus that came and died on the cross. The Bible says that every knee shall bow before him. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every person will worship Jesus as Lord. This, ought, this is oh, just a great reminder. Great reminder. All these things going on in our world. There's always been things going on in the world. All right? Every generation has had their problems, and every generation has had their issues. And I promise you, the World War I generation was thinking, even so come, Lord Jesus. And the World War II generation was saying, even so come, Lord Jesus. And through all the wars that we fought and the depressions, and, and that's just American history. And everyone's saying, even so come, Lord Jesus. And, and we want you to come back and be King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we're saying the same thing now as we see things falling apart, and we see freedoms being taken away from us. And, and we just got to remember every 
person will worship Jesus, says Lord. I didn't read the whole article, but I saw a little part of it. The one of our lead congressmen said something along the lines of, it doesn't matter if we do the will of God. I need to read that more before I say who the, the name of that person was. But one of our, one of our national leaders just dismissing God. Now, the, the Democratic Committee took out, took out the one nation under God. They took God out of, the, out of their platform uh, several years ago. And we understand that and, and, and there's problems on all sides of politics. I understand that. Not a political statement here. But at our leaders as our nation, um, we, we look at them and we think, what are you doing? You're taking us away from God. And, and, and you're not helping our, our nation to be blessed because blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And, and we think of all these problems and we realize... Every person will worship Jesus as Lord. The kingdoms of the world belong to Jesus, and one day he will reclaim them. What a thought this is. Revelation 11, verse 15, gives us a, a one-verse summary of that. You know what I love? One of the things I love about the Bible, it just does this. It fits together. I love studying it. And, and here's what I'm doing. As I'm reading my Bible, I'm writing verses down. And then it reminds me of another verse that was kind of like that, so I'll write that down there. I've got some pages in, in my notebooks and just lines just going everywhere because this one connects to this one, and they all fit together, and it works. It's just an amazing thing. Revelation eleven fifteen, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, now I don't know who these voices are, but they are the voices that God wants to make this proclamation. This is an amazing turning point, this proclamation. Listen to this saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. We should write a song about that. Hey, wait, they did. And He shall reign forever and ever. And He shall reign forever and ever. And he shall reign forever. And I, I love the song as it repeats and repeats. Forever and ever and ever and ever. What a thought. Jesus Christ shall reign forever and ever. Everyone, whether alive or dead, will worship Jesus as God. Look, look at verse number 29. And they that be and uh, they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship. That means those people that have everything that they want now, but they're ignoring God, they're gonna worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him. And none can keep alive his own soul. Everyone, whether alive or dead, will worship Jesus as God. The self-absorbed rulers of the world, listen, are powerless in the kingdom of God. It's amazing. Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords. These people, the rulers of our world, you notice something? They can't keep themselves alive. They're trying. Right? We're trying. Cryon, is it cryonics? Something like that. The, 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 cryogenics. Yes, I, I did a study on that. I forgot what it was called. People are like saving their bodies and saving their brains in deep freezers so that, you know, one day when we find the cures to these diseases, they can come back to life. And you got to have a lot of money to do that. Just hope there's not a power outage. You know, like there was in Texas. Actually, it's cold enough, so maybe if you go right. Um, but they're trying to stay, keep themselves alive. But here's what happens. No matter how powerful somebody is and how much they rule over the world, they all die. They can't keep themselves alive. The most basic of all needs, and not even the most powerful person on earth can do it, but every knee shall bow before Christ. We're not going to finish verse 30 and 31. I'm hoping to get to that next week. And um, we'll spend a little bit of time on that. I am, I am looking forward to being able to talk about, it's really neat, a seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he hath done this. This is going to be a really awesome, awesome study when we get to that. But we're out of time for this evening. Yes, Brother Timothy. Micah 6, 8. Do you have that handy right there? All right, Micah 6, 8. Go ahead and read that for us, Brother Timothy. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's, that's life right there. That's life. We live for God regardless of who's watching, whether anybody's watching or not watching. Just be the Christian you're supposed to be. I, I, I love that verse. Thank you, Brother Timothy. Okay, prayer requests. I'm going to start off. Um, Brother Brandon, can you send those to me? All right, that, that'll be helpful. Um, many of you know uh, 
Angie and Gilbert, they, they've not been able to come to church for a while. Um, but uh, she called Jen today with just a really urgent prayer request. She's been dealing with severe pain for, for a long time. And uh, just migraines and all kinds. Some of her things are similar to Brother Reed's pinched nerve type, but just a lot, a lot of pain. Um, she's been dealing with severe pain. She's been having, a, she's had an ongoing migraine since Sunday. Uh, she had injections done yesterday. But these injections are supposed to take away the pain, have made the pain worse. So it's just unbearable what she's going through. Uh, she says she hasn't slept since Sunday, so please pray. And um, they've got a, also a lawsuit regarding the accident that caused all of this. And that's coming up, uh, I think, this week or next week. So would you pray for Angie, pray for Gilbert as they're, as they're going through all of that. And just that, that pain, let's just pray that God would just take that pain and... and I don't know what he does with it, but he can take it and do something with it. As we're doing these prayer requests, um, I'm going to ask just a few people after, after we all mention prayer requests, maybe just to, not to go through a lot of them, but maybe just take a couple of these and to, just to publicly pray. And just, just, just for a minute, and we'll just kind of, kind of like popcorn prayer, all right? We'll just kind of go around and just pick one of these, and we'll, we'll just pray for one as we go, if you feel comfortable with doing that. All right. Um, who else? You've got a prayer request tonight that you would like our church family to be praying for. Lydia? Okay. So the Colorado Springs Church is where her family goes to church, and it's where they go whenever they go up to visit. A good friend of mine, but uh, Johnny passed away. I don't know, I don't know him, but um, let's pray for his family. Let's pray for their church as, as they are struggling with that loss. Who else? Bill James. Okay, uh, Brother and Mrs. Simmons, retired pastor, and um, just pray for him. It's uh, going, through, going through some hard times and her as well. Brother Vaughn. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'll, so I'll repeat those. A prayer for LaVon. A prayer for Brother Vaughn as he gets to go to the doctor, gets to check out some things. And I think we injured his shoulder tonight in, in teen time. So, oh, I hope, I hope not. But pray for his doctor visit. Uh, the Buchanan family uh, will be moving at the end of this month for about a year or so. Uh, they'll be moving to California. So pray for them. If they could find a good church and his job would be blessed while they're there. And uh, for them to be able to come back soon. All right, so anybody else? Mariano. Okay, so pray for Mario's, Mariano's Uncle Rudy with cancer appointments that are coming up. Pray for healing. Also pray for his salvation. Their family has been trying to share the gospel with him, pray that he listens and he gets saved. Okay, Connie? Okay. Okay, I'll repeat those. Um, pray for Connie's sister Janine and their family as they're traveling to be safe. And a praise, we've been praying for Evelyn. That's a grandmother of one of your friends. Is that correct? Yes. 
Okay. And um, so she had a test and no brain cancer was found. So that's just a huge answer to prayer. But she does have health issues. So would you be in prayer for her? I'm going to pray for Evelyn. All right. Who else? Yes, Anna. Okay, so pray for Anna's mom and sisters to be saved and a, a board exam next month. Next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Yes. Okay, next week. All right. Who else? Ben. Okay, pray for Uncle Alex as he's deployed. Some of you have been deployed. You understand a bit of that, and pray for him as he's, as he's away from family. Timothy. Uh, Blake. Continue play, praying for Mrs. Blake. I'm praying for her healing. And uh, took some of the men of the church over there. She called and she had asked, Miss Blake, I, you may be watching this evening. We're praying for you. She called and she had asked. The Bible says in James chapter 5, if any of you are sick, let them call the elders of the church and come and anoint you with oil and pray that the prayer of, the, of faith may raise up the sick, something like that. So that's exactly what we did. We're praying for Mrs. Blake's healing. I'd ask you to continue to help us pray for her to be healed. All right. Miriam. Okay, so pray for Miriam's mom with a lot of pain that she's going through. She had shots, but it's still not helping. And then her sister, who is a teacher and um, dealing with uh, some issues from rheumatoid arthritis and some other things. So pray that God would help her through that. And then some unspoken for Miriam. Anybody else? David. Okay, pray for Lupe. Okay, and pray for David to make good decisions about school. Okay. Have I missed anybody? Thanks for being patient and taking time. This is really an important time of our, of our week, actually, where we get a chance to hear other people's prayer requests, write them down, and then take these with us so that through the week we can hold up each other in prayer. And It, it really, we don't realize how important this Right now, what we're doing is it's, it's really, really incredibly important. I really believe in the power of prayer. Absolutely. And if we can get a lot of other people praying, that, that's, that's what we're just trying to share these requests for. So thanks for being patient with that. All right. Who else? Mom? Okay, so pray for Mrs. Dye, and let me finish writing this here so I don't, there we go. Um, diverticulitis, intestinal type of disease, so, so pray for her. Just a lot of pain that that's causing. She went to the emergency room this last weekend because of that. Um, pray for Mona, who's had a lot of pain in her knees, so would you just uh, pray that God would help with that, take that pain. All right. I know we've got some, some online that we'll go to here in just a second. I'm going to ask you to pray for Carmelita. Many of you know Carmelita. She, I visited her in the hospital yesterday and today, and uh, she's just really, really struggling. She's um, been dealing with cancer, and the chemo treatments that, that they've got her on are just, they're just tearing her body up. It's just been so hard for her. Um, she's at a point where she's, she can hardly grab things. She can't touch things, and uh, it, it just hurts. The pain is just so, so, so bad. So pray for Carmelita. Um, She's, she's also blind, so she just has a difficult time with 
some of the things that we, you and I would probably take for granted. So uh, she's supposed to be going home. She may have gone home this afternoon. Would you pray for her healing and also pray for her to have the help that she needs because very difficult doing these things, especially in her situation. So if you would pray for her. Okay, then we've got a couple here. Um, Nick Wilde's asking us to pray for somebody to get saved. I'm not sure who that is. Paris Jackson. You know who Paris Jackson is? All right. Nick, we will pray for, for that person to be saved. And then, um, who's this? Oh, it's from Brianna. Okay. Um, please pray for my cousin Allie and her children for peace and comfort from the loss of her mom and also for safety as they travel. All right, is that, is that the two from, from tonight? Okay, awesome. Well, let's do this. A little bit different this evening than, than we have done in the past. I know we've been doing that a lot. Um, I'd like just a few people that would want to, maybe to, to just mention two, maybe three of those prayer requests, and then uh, we'll take maybe, maybe 10 minutes at the, at the very most, and we'll just go through and, and give, give everybody that wants to a chance to pray. All right, we'll just stay right here in the auditorium if you want to do that. Do you have anybody that would be interested in, in helping with that? Just uh, to just to pray. Timothy, you want to do that? Caleb? Anybody else? Um, Miles, were you able to hear some of those requests? All right, why don't you pray for, for one or two of those if you do that as well? All right, anybody else wants to do that? All right. Um, Brother Vaughn, that'd be great. That'd be great. Awesome. Well, let's do this. Uh, let's have, uh, Caleb, why don't you start... And Timothy, then, then Vaughn, then Miles, and I'll finish things up, okay? Just, just a couple. Um, don't, don't t- you have to go through that whole list. I do want you to take this whole list home, and I do want you praying through this whole list. All right, that's what we're going to do. But tonight, let's, let's, um, as the Lord puts these requests in our heart, let's pray for those. Pray, pray with them as they're praying out loud. Go ahead, Brother Kim. known. I pray that you be with everyone who's represented here, Father. Lord, please be with uh, Brother Reed, Lord. We pray for his health. I pray that you continue to work in his body and give the doctors wisdom on his treatments and his therapy, Lord, and help him to continue to get better and just be able to be in church and do the things that I know he wants to do, Father, for you. Lord, I pray for uh, Angie and Gilbert, Lord, and I pray for their situation there, Father, for Miss Angie's headaches, Lord, that have been very severe. I pray that you would take those away and heal her body. I pray that you would please just comfort her, Lord, and replace that pain with comfort. Just help her to be able to um, get peace and, and be able to do the things that she would want to do, Lord, and need to do on a daily basis, Father, without the pain of, of headaches and migraines. Be with their court date that's coming up. I pray that that would get resolved the way it should, Lord, and I pray that justice would be there, Lord, so they could be able to move forward with that and that you would just see that they are taken care of through that whole process, Father. Lord, I pray for... Brother Johnny, Lord, this member in Colorado Springs, Lord, that passed away, I pray that you be with his family, and I pray that you be with the church there, Lord. Um, when someone passes away, there's always people that are affected, Lord, and I pray that you would just be with everyone that's affected there. And if anybody there is not saved, I pray that it be a relative or a friend of his, they would get saved through his testimony, Father. And Lord, I do pray for Brother Simmons, who's there in hospice there in Arizona. Father, he's been faithful for many, many years. I pray that you would just give him that peaceful and, and happy time there, Lord, with his family. I pray that you would help him to also not have any pain and to have comfort, and that you would just um, give him a, a wonderful end of his life, Lord, and, and I pray you give him as much time as possible to spend with his family and to be able to be there and enjoy his time, Father, and be with Bill Simmons and be with their his whole family represented there, Father. And Lord, we do ask that you would just be with everyone here represented tonight, be with our pastor, thank you for him and his family. Help us to just continue to be faithful and do our very best to grow and to be a witness for you, Lord. We ask all in your name. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us together tonight. Thank you for the encouragement of your word that you are the King of Kings. And um, that we should just look to you and not uh, to all the men that we perceive to be in power. Lord, 
thank you. I want to pray for all the other things that you do. But just most importantly, that you would stay. Um, just pray for opportunities uh, for families to uh, give them the gospel and to stay moving with their heart for that. And we do pray that you would also work uh, through this Dr. Kapanga and the treatment that she is having. Help him to see your goodness in, in all of us that we're bringing to the table. We pray also for friends and for Alex and Troy. Just pray that you would strengthen him in all the difficulties that he has faced. Pray that you would help him to see you clearly. Clearly, O oh Lord, just uh, in his burden and in his new life. Amen. Miles. Father, thank you for the time we have together tonight. And Lord, as we lift these names up to you, there are so many that just really, really need you. There's nothing we can do. There's nothing humanly possible that can be done, but we know that you can, and we trust that, that uh, you will. Lord, we ask that you would work. Lord, those, so many who are dealing with pain and, and sickness right now, Lord, I pray that you would help Angie. And Lord, please, please give her relief from her pain. And Mrs. Di and, and Mona, Lord, also Lupe, help her with her health, and Miriam's mom, and Lord, Mrs. Blake, and Carmelita. So many just really struggling with pain and, and hurt and sickness, and Rudy. Lord, I pray that you would help him. Brother Simmons, Lord, there's so many just, and we realize in situations like this just how weak we are and just how much we need you. So, Lord, I, I ask that you would do a powerful work, do a wonderful work in a way that, 
people will know that you did get involved and, and uh, they know that it, was, it had to have been you. Lord, we know so many stories. We've heard so many testimonies of how you have worked in the past. And Lord, we ask that you do it again and we ask that you'd work in the lives of these people that we've mentioned to you. Lord, I do ask that you'd give David good decisions as, as he's at school and please keep Alex safe as he's deployed. And I pray that you'd save Anna's mom and her sisters and Lord, help them to understand that they need you and just how much you love them and, and just how free your gift of salvation is. And please help her with her board exam next week. Lord, pray that you keep Janine safe and her family safe as she travels. And, and thank you that and as Evelyn had the test that, that uh, came back, that she does not have brain cancer. But Lord, I pray that you would continue to help with her health problems that she's been uh, dealing with. And Lord, I pray that you'd help Vaughn as he goes to the doctor next week. And it's been a, a long time waiting for these appointments. Lord, I pray that you would uh, help them to go well. And I pray that you would guide them and help them not to get canceled. And Lord, I do ask that you'd bring LaVon back to you. And I pray that you'd bring her home. And I pray that you would change her life. And I pray that you would just do a, a miracle work. Lord, sometimes we would pray about health, but or this time we're asking for you to do a spiritual work. And Lord, I pray that you would do a, just a powerful, amazing miracle in her life and bring her to you. Lord, I pray that you would be with the church in Colorado Springs as they lost one of their people. And Lord, I pray that you would pr protect them and comfort them and help them to stay close to you. Lord, I pray that you'd help our people to stay close to you as we travel, keep us safe, as we go about our daily lives. I pray that you'd keep us healthy. Help us to be good testimonies. Help us to tell people about you. Lord, I pray that you'd use us in a powerful way to share your gospel and, and even for people just to see your light shining through our lives. And Lord, I thank you for the family of New Heights Baptist Church. And Lord, I, I ask that you would continue to work in each of our hearts. And I know that Everybody here has got something that could discourage them and something that could hold them back and something that could pull them down. But Lord, I pray that you would encourage their hearts. And I pray that as we see that you are King of kings and Lord of lords and that you are in charge and that it won't be long. One of these days you will reign as King of kings, as we saw tonight, the governor of over all the kingdoms of the earth. Lord, I thank you for that promise. And I just pray that you'd comfort our, our hearts and help us to live triumphantly, and, and live in a way that pleases you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, before you go tonight, don't forget, our, our vision offering is going to be on Sunday. Would you pray about that? Would you pray about how God would have you to give towards our offering this year? And uh, whatever comes in, we're going we're gonna to do the very best we can to remodel that upstairs area, the junior church area, the kids' classes, and... Um, there's, there's, a, there's a lot that we want to do, so just be in prayer about that, how God would have you to work. And we'll look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Uh, Saturday, if you want to, 1 o'clock, we'll be here to go share the gospel with people. If you want to go do that, I'll teach you, or somebody else will teach you. We'll, we'll go out and we'll, we'll take some time to talk to some people about the gospel. If you're nervous about that, we'll just put some tracks on people's doors, but we're going to share the gospel at Saturday, 1 o'clock. And then Sunday school is running again, so 9.30 on Sunday morning. Listen, there's no time change this Sunday, so there's no excuse. Plan to be here. I think, I think you'll get a lot out of Bible study Sunday school time. Thank you all for being here tonight, and you're dismissed. Answers call, learning.